So today's video uh, is actually inspired and is being made purely because one of you guys left a comment in my comment section down below. <laughs> the comment to inspire this video is from Gobjex. Uh, Gobjex says, I reckon you should do a video where you show off your clothing collection or shoes. And big respect from the UK. It's crazy to hear from you guys all the way up to the UK. Absolutely wild. <laughs> I love seeing in the comments where all you guys are from. It's crazy to see that it really is a worldwide audience. But uh, after seeing this comment, I thought, hell, why not? Let's do a showcase video of me showcasing my entire sneaker collection as of the 7th of November, 2021. Yeah, wow guys, it has been a while since I've done one of these videos. <laughs> um, like, I've, I've wanted to do one for my closet for the longest time, but because I'm working Monday to Friday, the only days I get to uh, do videos is Saturday or Sunday, and that's a big video. I, I, I really want to do, do it. Maybe at the end of the year, I should just do like a big showcase of my closet. If you guys want me to do that, or if you want me to do any videos in particular, please let me know in that comment section below, because this whole video is being made today purely because of that one comment. So I do read the comment section, guys. Definitely let me know if there's specific content that you want to see on the channel. But uh, yeah, I've, I'm going to be showcasing you my entire sneaker collection today. Uh, to let you guys know, it's I haven't been wearing a lot of my sneakers as of late. Uh, working Monday to Friday, it, the sneakers that I have don't really work with the clothing that I wear. So it's really the weekend that I really get to wear sneakers. Uh, so I usually try and bust them out as much as I can on the weekend. <laughs> Interchanging them between you know different uh, things that I got to do in the day and stuff like that. But yeah, guys, uh, let's get into it. I'm going to record uh, it on my phone actually so you will have different angles of the sneakers so we're not sitting around doing this i'm going to outline them all on my bed here and then we'll go through them uh row by row i reckon i think that's the best way to go about it so uh yeah i'll be back in a couple minutes time while i set up the whole sneaker collection up on my bed and here we are guys the sneaker collection that i have uh slowly been collecting ever since uh 2015 or maybe the end of 2014 start of 2015 but yeah six years i mean when i put it like that it actually doesn't seem like much it probably could have been a lot bigger but you, you guys know me i'm a size uh us 16 slash 17 i can fit into a 17 but in some of the models uh 17 is uh, more on the bigger side, so I do like to go with a 16 sometimes. So it does limit my options with a lot of the silhouettes that I can pick up. So I really do kind of get forced into buying a lot of Jordans, uh, purely just because of size. I would love it if a lot more of uh, the higher end designer brands and just uh, brands in general did my size because there are a lot of other silhouettes and shoes that I would love to pick up and that's probably the most restricting element of being this size is that you're very much uh, funneled into this look and there's not really much else that you can really go with because uh, yeah I would love to try things like boots uh, derbies or all, all those other different silhouettes but it's very limiting at a size uh, 16 and 17. Now I do have some like other generic shoes that aren't showcased in this uh, whole collection here you know things like Converse and uh, maybe a pair of like Doc Martens uh, 1461s and stuff I don't know I feel like they weren't really relevant because they're not like a special collaboration or anything and you can go to literally any sports store and uh, see a pair of Converse and stuff like that, so I didn't really include them in this list. I kind of just included the pairs that I guess are, I don't know, hard to come by or are of uh, significant, you know, mentioning. So yeah, um, we'll cover this whole collection simply just by going through the uh, first row. We'll go through this first row here and then working our way slowly through it. But uh, yeah, I'm really keen to dive into it, guys. So let's get into this first row showcased here. Okay, well, let's dive into this first shoe in the first row, which uh, ooh, might need a little bit of dust in there. <laughs> As you can tell, not a very worn pair here, but what we have is the Air Jordan 6 uh, Chameleons. 
These released as a part of the All-Star pack uh, a couple years ago. I can't even actually remember the year. What was the year that these were released in? Can we find a tag of some sorts on the... Ah, oh, there we go. That'll tell me the year of, like, when it was released. It should be... Do, 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 what, 2016? Yeah, okay, so it looks like it was manufactured in 2016, so I'm going to say this is probably the All-Star pack uh, that released in 2016, but you could probably Google it and find me as being incorrect there uh it features this like iridescent uh coloring on it i'm going to move it into the light and see if you can see it like shimmering or changing a little bit there uh these released alongside a pair of air jordan one highs in the similar type of color which was awesome they were actually the pair that i wanted out of the whole pack but uh yeah the reason that i picked these up was because they were just dumb cheap uh i think it was on goat that i picked them up from uh, they were like 90 bucks, like it was missing a top of the lid, I'd never bought a pair of sixes before, and I was like, look, I want to see how the sixes look on my feet, I don't want to pay a lot for a pair of Air Jordan sixes if I think they look absolutely whack with the type of outfits that I'm wearing, and uh, yeah, I just thought that for like 90 USD, this was a good one to start off with, because as much as it's got like that irid like iridescent colouring, um, it's like quite easy to wear like it's a single color All I got to do was wear like a pretty dark fit and they work really really well with it So that is the first one showcased in the first row. We have the chameleon sixes, which Definitely need a clean because I just do not wear them enough uh, Moving into the next pair here Another pair of sixes a pretty recent pickup for me. We have the air jordan 6 carmines the 2021 retro with the uh, Nike Air on it, just like how it was back in 1991, I'm um, from memory, because the fives were 1990s, so the sixes are 91. Uh, it also features Jumpman branding on it and a disgusting look at outsole there. <laughs> we'll just focus on this. this. This is what you're going to be looking at when I'm wearing them on feet. Not so much the outsole, which, hey, look, I mean, I guess that shows that I wear them. Uh, I'm, as I do with all the pairs here, they are all definitely worn. Uh, yeah, I really like this colorway. It is an OG colorway, one that released in uh, back when these first released. It's an iconic one, worn by many celebrities and Michael Jordan himself. Very easy to wear as well. The red isn't super piercing and off-putting. It's simply just white and black for the other colors on it. So it's pretty versatile. Uh, I would wear this probably less than I would really should be because it's really just an iconic silhouette and colorway. I absolutely love them. I will be try trying to pick up the rest of the sixes that have released in OG branding uh, that are part of the OG colorways that released in 91. Uh, it's just that, yeah, I guess like just Jordans in general these days are just going for like dumb amounts of money. So um, I'm, that's why I haven't bought a lot on the channel as of late because they just go for ridiculous amounts of money. But that is the second pair, the Carmine Sixes. We'll leave them there and move on to pair number three over here, which is the very uh, initially controversial uh, Shattered Backboard 3.0s. Uh, I picked this up from a boutique, so I managed to cop them for retail. Not that that really matters these days, as these are just going for, I think, slightly above retail, maybe a little bit more. I'm unsure. I've honestly not checked the resale on these uh, as of late. They crease pretty damn weirdly. <laughs> and they have that uh, shiny finish uh, on top of the leather upper, which was a big controversial move by Jordan Brand at the time of these releasing because like it, the colorway itself is sick. This, you know, amazing starfish orange and the black done in like the bread uh, color blocking, but people just didn't like this shattered uh, glass looking finish on the leather. And also on top of that, they didn't like the aged sole because at the time this like aged sole neo vintage look wasn't really liked by a lot of uh, sneaker heads at the time. Now you see it all the time. Now you see people buying Foxtrot uniforms, a uh, little pen and coloring the midsoles like this color all the time. So it's it's on trend now, but when these released, it was definitely not on trend. Uh, heaps of people weren't feeling them when they released, but I was one of, I guess, one of the uh, few people on YouTube actually saying, you know what, these are actually kind of cool. And I do like them. I like wearing them around the, uh, you know, spookier season of the year, around Halloween. And I do have a really nice Baltimore uh, Orioles uh, leather jacket that is 
black and orange leather that just matches really, really well with these. So I like to crack that out in an outfit every now and then as well. But yeah, a really solid shoe. I think definitely overhated when it first released. I don't know how the community feels about them these days, but I think they're a solid pickup. They are definitely a really solid Jordan 1. Love to pick up the other Shattered Backboard colorways, but uh, if you guys know the Shattered Backboard 1.0s and 2.0s, go for darn money these days. Like they just go for ridiculous amounts. And moving into the last shoe in the first row, we have, well, a lot of you are probably looking at these like, Daniel, why the hell are you buying fake ass, thick ass, sold Chicago's? <laughs> <laughs> and look, yeah, I mean, to be fair, if you've never seen these before, you're probably like, what the bloody hell are these? Uh, these are the Air Jordan 1.5s. So uh, back in, oh, I want to say 2015, uh, Jordan Brand decided to release these uh, to commemorate the player exclusive uh, one, Jordan 1.5s that Michael Jordan wore back in 1985, potentially early 1986. Uh, as you can see, it has an Air Jordan 1 upper that's been slightly modified. Instead of Jordan branding on the Wings logo here, you have Nike branding. Uh, and instead of the uh, normal sh Chicago tongue, which is a very different color to what these are, it has a black and red branded tongue with a, I guess you'd say yellow tinted um, tongue. I don't know if you can see that as well with the lighting, but it's kind of yellow tinted. It's not white. That was a design choice. That's like what they went with. And the major feature that obviously you notice as well, uh, the sole. The midsole is very, very thick on these. Uh, it features the Air Jordan 2 midsole and outsole. So if I can, yep, flip that over, you can see that it has the Air Jordan 2 outsole instead of the Air Jordan 1 outsole, which I'll just get a quick comparison for you guys. There is the Air Jordan 1 outsole and there is the Air Jordan 2 outsole. I think these are sick. These are actually way more comfortable than the normal Jordan 1s. Like that outsole really does make the difference. I'm a huge fan of the Jordan 2s. I don't obviously own any Jordan 2s in the whole collection, but would love to eventually. I think this is a really overrated, uh, sorry, really overlooked Jordan 1 uh, player exclusive. I'd love to pick up some of the other OG colorways they dropped in the 1.5s, but with the Jordan 1 market at the moment, anything that even has the OG colorways on it goes for dumb amounts of money. So I was really glad to pick these up when I did. I think I paid under retail for them back in the day. Uh, people just didn't want them because back in the day, you used to be able to cop the actual Chicago's for like double retail, maybe three times retail. So why would you buy these at retail or slightly below when you could just spend, I, I mean, I'd say three times the money and you, it's probably like, whoa, what the hell? But yeah, you'd much rather buy those than those. I bought both. I, I literally bought them as a bundle deal and yeah, have never regretted it because this is just such a sick shoe. But that is the first four there. Uh, we'll dive into the next row that we have along here. Now moving into the second row to kick it off with, we have my only ever owned pair of Ultra Boost. Uh, Back when I first got into Ultra Boost, uh, back in like 2015, 16, uh, Ultra Boost actually had resale. People actually wanted to buy and resell Ultra Boost. Uh, that died off pretty quickly. And as it was dying more towards 2016, 2017, I wanted to try the Boost technology because I'd never actually worn it on my feet. So I picked up these uh, Ultra Boost 1.0 laceless pairs. I've got to be real, it's a pre pretty ugly shoe with a pretty like, I don't even know what the hell they were doing here with this texture bit. <laughs> they should have just had the knit across the whole area. I don't know why it's like this. Uh, they're really comfy, really spongy. The Ultra Boost is awesome. It was a great introduction uh, introduction to Ultra Boost. But as you can see, that uh, definitely didn't influence any further sneaker purchases there. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, if I ever need to do, like, need, need to go on a light run or something like that, these are just a really solid pair to do it in. Uh, you know, no laces, no worrying about, you know, them coming undone during a run or something. Just a really, really nice slip-on pair of shoes there. I will move into the second pair that we have here, which is a pair of fives, a pair of OG fives. We have the, oh God, is this 2020? Is this the 2020 retro? I can't even remember which years these release in anymore. We have the OG retro, 
Nike Air branding there of the Air Jordan 5 uh, uh, grey tongue or silver tongued fire reds because there's two technical colors of the fire reds there's the black tongued uh, fire reds and the silver tongued ones uh, it features uh, OG branding on the bottom as well I don't know if we'll be able to showcase it there it is there Nike branding on the bottom not Jordan branding uh, a really solid shoe Primarily white upper, so really versatile, really easy to wear with just a nice fire red trim around the ankle area and branding. Uh, it's a really solid silhouette. I love the fives. It's, the fives seem to be hit or miss with a lot of people. I guess a lot of uh, like non-sneaker fans don't like the look of the fives, but sneaker heads like the fives. I'm a fan. I think it's an awesome silhouette. I want to pick like the rest of them up that are OG branded uh, as well, but uh, what is it? The black tongued fire red fives we haven't seen in og branding for a long ass time um it's just really hard to get og branded jordans these days or just jordans in general for a good price they just go for ridiculous money and uh, not like how it was back in 2015 when i first got into them moving on we have a very iconic colorway here in a incorrect box but it was the box that he had to give to me so <laughs> we have the 2013 retro of the black tongues uh, unfortunately not the player exclusive black tongues the black tongues uh, that were player exclusive that michael jordan wore actually had a black tongue there's a couple photos that you can find online of the black tongue black toes uh, they have never been retroed i would absolutely love for them to be retroed but we have the 2013 retro here uh, this one's notorious for its bad leather um, the 2016 retro of the same colorway is from what i've heard a lot better uh, I personally really love the shape of it. I don't know why, it just feels way different to any other Jordan 1 that I've worn. It feels a lot tighter in the areas that I want it tighter. Maybe it's just because I haven't worn them a lot, but I don't know, man. I feel like it is the structure. Like, they are just different in some way. Uh, I, you may also notice, I'll see if I can showcase it to you here, the tongue and the little loop that you have the laces going through isn't actually uh, cut into the tongue like modern day Jordan ones. It's literally just like a little nylon strip which the laces thread under. So this can just like come off very easily. While if we go to a more modern retro of a Jordan one, let's grab the David Letterman's here for an example. If we go to the same cutout that is on the tongue, we can see that it is actually part of the tongue. We can see the exposed sponge uh, on the side there. So it is, it's cut at, into the actual tongue there. I just thought that, that was quite interesting that from 2013, they changed that design choice up from going with a little nylon tab there uh, that you thread the laces underneath to actually cutting into the tongue. I'm assuming that the 1985 pairs actually had a cut in the tongue, which is why they changed it back in the modern day retros and stuff like that. But a cool little thing that you just may or may not know about the 2013 retros there. And moving into a very, very sought after Jordan 1. When I bought it, it wasn't sought after at all. We have the OG 1985 colorway. Well, that was also a 1985 OG colorway as well. <laughs> uh, which, I mean, there's a lot of names for it. These are just the black and whites, but a lot of people nickname them like the Pandas, the Oreos. Uh, from my days, they were just called the black and whites. They weren't given the Pandas or Oreos as a nickname. These came out in 2014, I want to say, and got like a 2019 women's retro release. You can see the tag here is like incredibly old and it's actually on the tongue instead of like the inside of the shoe down here. But uh, yeah. It says 20, manufactured in 2014 there, so I would safely say it released in 2014 as well. <laughs> yeah, a, a really solid colorway, very easy to wear. Uh, it has the same thing as the Black Toes from 2013 here. It has the little nylon uh, tag here instead of the cut out of the tongue. And the tongue is a lot thinner on these old pairs versus the more newer retros over there. Uh, it's a very, very thin tongue, which, some of you may or may not like, but yeah, this one's getting old. They need to retro it like soon because the women's retro was very sought after. It's a very sought after colorway because it's so you know versatile and so simple. Uh, I should honestly wear them more, but um, yeah, unfortunately with work all the time, it makes it quite difficult to wear them. But that is the second row of sneakers to showcase here, guys. Let me know what your favorite is out of that row there. 
but we'll move into the third row next. The third row, let's dive into it. So the first one that we have here is a Jordan 1. Different to the normal 1985 box though, it's not black and red. It is obviously white and black. This one released as part of a Easter bundle a couple years ago. They were these um, canvas Jordan 1s. So instead of a leather upper, as you can see, it's done with a canvas where instead of the panels being individual leather strips, you have simply just the stitching to showcase the paneling there. Uh, I thought these are really cool. They came in a bunch of other pastel colors as well. So this is the pastel blue ones. They came in a pastel pink and a creamy white. I bought these on sale for like 90 bucks from East Bay. Um, people just didn't want them. I mean, they didn't want them in the big sizes as well. This is a size 17, but people didn't want them because it's just like, at the time, there were so many other Jordan ones they could have copped. And it's like, why would I buy these canvas Easter ones when I could buy a way better one than that? But I think they're really sick. I think the colorways that they all came in were awesome. They're uh, a good summer shoe because, you know, you don't really want to be wearing like really heavy leather shoes in summer because your feet will get sweaty. And this is a good compromise because it's canvas. It's a lot more lighter weight. It's a lot more breathable. Uh, no holes punched into the top of it, though, like the leather pairs, though. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, still a little bit uh, warm when you do wear them in the summer, but I really like them. I think this is a really solid Jordan 1. I wanted to pick up the other ones uh, from Goat a while back, but now they're just going for ridiculous prices when back in the day I bought it for on sale. So uh, there's that. We'll move into the next pair, which is my only pair of fours. I would love to pick up so many more OG branded fours. The problem is, Fours are going for dumb expensive prices these days when they didn't used to, and I just can't really justify it. We have the What The Fours here. This was the 30th anniversary uh, release uh, to celebrate, obviously, 30 years of the Jordan 4 being out. Uh, it has all the four OG colorways of the Jordan 4 spliced into it. So you can notice that they are actually two different pairs of shoes here. So you can see that it's got the red tongue there and the military blues. Uh, so the four colorways that originally released, what are they? The military blues, the breads, the fire reds, and the white cements. They're the four, right? That sounds right. Uh, so you can see all the different elements of it. So you can see the white cement there. You can see the military blue panel there. Uh, on this one, you can see the fire, uh, fire reds there. And then you can see, I guess that's the breads potentially, and the military blue branding at the back and then the white cement branding on the back there. Uh, it's, it's super versatile, even though it's got all these spliced different colorways together, because it's a primarily white upper, it's really versatile, really easy to wear. As you can see, I've uh, worn them a little bit myself, <laughs> but I love it. These really got me into the fours. I would love to own the breads. I would love to own any OG branded ones with Nike Air on the back of them. But yeah, they're just like, expensive jordans are just like dumb expensive these days they didn't used to be uh speaking of dumb expensive jordans <laughs> we have an all-time classic here one that is very sought after by a lot of people we have the air jordan one breads the 2016 one as you can see it's got that tumbled leather on the red panels which was the big highlight of the 2016 release and also the sizing and uh dates that they were made uh on here as well i think uh this is something that they did on the 1985 pairs they had the uh factory and the date that it was produced on the side there uh, they stopped doing it, but I reckon they should have continued doing it on all OG branded uh, and OG colorways of the Jordan 1 because I thought it was just like an awesome little addition here. As you can see, this one is a size 17, so it is quite big. Uh, I got these for my 18th birthday for retail because back then you could buy that type of stuff in these sizes for retail. Now any size of the breads just goes for dumb money, but uh, yeah, I bought this off a guy uh, for retail. He had two pairs because nobody wanted to buy the size 17s, but I was like, dude, I'm literally a size 17. It's gonna be my 18th uh, birthday gift <laughs> to myself. <laughs> yeah, no, super sick colorway. I've worn them quite a bit, very versatile, uh, a must have. But these days, look, if you're a smaller size, it's almost like not even worth trying to get them because they're just dumb expensive on the secondary market. Now, next we move into my only pair of SBs. Um, and you're probably thinking, damn Daniel, I can't wait to see these dunks that are size 17 or 16. This is gonna be massive. 
<laughs> well, unfortunately, to disappoint, they're not actually dunks. No, they are continuing the ongoing trend. They are actually Jordan 1s. So what we have here are the Lance Mountain Nike SB Jordan 1s. So Lance Mountain is a skater. Uh, he is a skater that at the time of this shoe being made was sponsored by Nike SB. Uh, and back when he used to skate in the 80s and early 90s, uh, he would wear mix matching Jordan 1s. There's this iconic independent trucks ad that he featured in where he's wearing a Royal one and a UNC one on different feet. Now, when he got his collaboration with Nike SB and Jordan Brand in, I wanna say 2015 was the year that it came out, uh, he applied his love for how he wore Jordans back in the day to this collaboration. So as you can see, this shoe, I'll flip it up this way actually, this will make it a lot easier to showcase. This shoe features two different Jordans, but you probably didn't see that when you initially saw the upper because it's all black here. Well, the special part about this uh, collaboration is that the black upper, when you wear it away and skate in them, the actual colorway underneath gets brought through. So as you can see, this one is a bread, and when you wear this one here, it'll become a royal. Uh, I scratched out the back of them on purpose to kind of mimic the band uh, breads, that, uh, the band ones that came out in 20, I think 11 was their initial release date. I did it on both just to have it that way. I just wanted to do that because eventually when I do wear them in, uh, it'll wear away all the paint and you know, I'll have another pair of breads or at least one bread here and then one royal. Uh, I thought it was also quite interesting that because it's an SB collaboration, they actually come with the thick SB laces. As you can see here, the laces are incredibly thick, uh, unlike the Jordan one normal laces, which are quite thin. I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, I don't know, don't know how you guys feel about that. It's a very different fitting shoe as well. These do not, like I would still buy the same size as my normal Jordan ones, but they have heaps more padding in it. They're a lot thicker. They feel a lot heavier as well. Uh, I bought these literally when I got a notification from Goat. I put them on my want list in my size and uh, Goat one day said, hey, someone's selling them for 350 US dollars. I was like 17 at the time. Um, uh, literally this purchase made me go broke, but I knew that in the future, these were just gonna go for ridiculous money. So if I bought them then, I wouldn't have to pay the ridiculous price that it was gonna turn into later. And lo and behold, I think now they just go for ridiculous money, like crazy money on the secondary market. Obviously these won't because I've scuffed them and they're size 17, but I really just wanted them. Uh, I'm really happy that I own them. Uh, look, if I wasn't working nine to five, uh, Monday to Friday, I'd probably learn how to skate and skate in these because it'd just be an awesome pair to wear. Uh, yeah, but that is the third row, guys. We had the Lance Mountain Nike SB Jordan 1s. We had the Bread 2016 retro of the uh, Bread 1s. We had the What the 4s and we had the Easter uh, canvas Jordan ones in the pastel blues. So let me know how you feel about row three and which ones are your favorite, but we'll move on now to the next row. Okay, moving into the third row, the fourth row. I can't even remember at this point. <laughs> the next row. Uh, to kick it off with, we have some ASICs. Nothing too crazy here. They're literally just a pair of GT 1000s, a very stable uh, running shoe that I just use for like some exercise every now and then. Nothing too crazy. In saying that though, I had to give Asics a shout out though because their recent collaborations with like Kiko, Vivian Westwood, uh, all these other brands as well, Brain Dead, like they've been coming out with some solid stuff recently that is getting overlooked. And because they are all getting like Asics and a lot of brands like that are getting overshadowed by like Nike and Jordan brand in the sneaker market, they actually have to put in a lot of effort when it comes to their collaborations to stand out. And I've been noticing it. Uh, unfortunately, they just don't release them in my size. So I haven't been picking them up. <laughs> I don't know if any of the Asics collaborations are released in my size. I wouldn't mind a pair of like Gel Light 3s. Honestly, they're a really nice casual Asics shoe, but uh, yeah, just thought I'd give the GT 1000s there a shout out. They're a very old model there. I think they're like the GT 1000s, like version four or something. Uh, next we have, 
another pair of Jordan 5s. We have the Black Metallics. Um, these were the 2016 OG Retro. I think they were 2016. They feature the Nike Air branding and Nike branding on the bottom, which my hand is covering and some leaves there by the looks of it. Uh, these are an awesome shoe, an awesome retro really versatile easy to wear you've got that really nice like nubuck suede material it's just really really solid um and the resale isn't even that bad on these like i'm pretty sure you can get these for a pretty good price people again are overlooking the fives but this is a really solid retro i would highly recommend picking up the fives i think fives are awesome especially the og colors uh the og colorways they're just super sick anything with og branding on it i'm on board um it's just that when jordan brand puts like jump men on the back of it and stuff like that that's where i kind of lose my interest i kind of like them having og branding it's not even necessarily it has to be an og colorway the og branding is the selling point for me now next we move into i mean i thought these were sick i wore these literally every day for like two-thirds of the year that they came out i thought these were like one of the best shoes to come out that year uh the rest of the sneaker community didn't really agree with me but now these days they do go for some pretty crazy money what we have is the air jordan one top threes so to showcase it to you these are the top three uh most selling colorways of the air jordan one um put into a singular pair of jordan ones so as you can see you've got the royals in the back here you've got the breads on the toe you got Chicago's at the back with the Royals coming in at the toe. And as you can see, two very different uh, color. Uh, you got the you know Royals there and the breads there on the bottom. I thought these were sick. That like I remember the story of like Lil Yachty buying like heaps of pairs of them, thinking that they were gonna skyrocket in the resale market and just be sold out everywhere. But people slept on them when they came out initially, and now they I think they go for some, yeah, some good money. I personally love them. I like I wore the living crap out of them. Like there's so much heel drag on them. Uh, the foam is completely worn out in there. I think the insoles are cooked as well. Like I think towards the toe. Uh, I thought these were really cool as well because they came with three extra pairs of laces. So they came with the black ones obviously, and then they came with the blue or the royal laces the white laces and the red laces. Uh, I think they look awesome with white laces in them, but um, I went with the black laces at, at, in the end. Uh, I also at one point had the laces correlate with whichever one was on the bottom. So these are the royal pair on the bottom. So I wore blue laces with these at one point. And then these I wore with the uh, red laces because they got the bread outsole there. Uh, obviously that was a bit too extra extravagant for me these days. So I just go with, you know, the black laces, but I love this pair. This is an amazing pair. Definitely still slept on. I've worn them so much. You like you look at that toe box. It's, toe box is just cooked. <laughs> Next, we move into a pair that well, I have not worn at all really. We have the I think they're called the Hero, uh, the Star is Born. These did not go for much when these came out. People were not feeling them. Uh, a lot of people weren't feeling the embroidered swoosh on them. I kind of thought that was a cool take on them. You can actually pull all the embroidery out and it has a nice red swoosh underneath, which complements the shoe quite a bit. I know a couple of sneaker YouTubers did that when they uh, first copped this pair. I kept them as is. I actually wore these to my trip to Melbourne because they're just super comfy. The tumbled leather is really plush. It's really nice, really soft. Uh, it has the uh, Wings logo being able to be stripped back. I mean, the laces are currently through it, so I can't really strip them back for you. But it has um, a hero is born. So it has a hero on this side. Uh, oh, sorry, no, a star. Oh, a star A star on this side is born on this side. And then I think it has uh, MJ's date of birth uh, on it as well. But yeah, honestly, don't wear them as much as I should. I mainly bought them because I was like, bam, they're cheap. They're really easy colorway to wear kind of like the embroidered swoosh on them and i have a pair of um uh cross colors uh sweatpants that are black red and green and they look really nice with these when i wear them with that now moving into my only pair of air jordan one lows we have the air jordan one low og uh premium tan i think these are called they are all white in the upper with just a little bit of tan leather for the uh, Wings logo at the back, the Nike Air branding on the tongue. I love this silhouette. This is a true to 1985 silhouette, because look at that swoosh. 
that swoosh is huge and I really love it on the Air Jordan 1. Unfortunately, modern day retros, as you can see, do not have the huge swoosh like the OG lows do. I know that the high 85s are the model that Jordan brand uses these days with the huge swoosh on them, but I think they should have just done it from the get-go. I reckon all these pairs that I have would have looked way better with the huge swoosh like this. It would have looked very 1985. I don't think this modernized swoosh looks too good on it, too good on it in comparison. Unfortunately, after this shoe, they stopped doing Air Jordan 1 low OGs for years. They did all these lows that have like jump men on them and they just, yeah, they just really ruined the lows after this. They have brought a couple low OGs back recently, like in the past 12 to 18 months, but it's just not the same, man. I really wish that they went back to the lows and did like OG colorways again of the lows. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, lows of the OG colorways, because I would love to pick up, I, I know the Chicago's got a low OG retro. I'd love to pick those up uh, in a low OG, but I mean, the UNCs would look really nice. Just really wish they brought it back. It's one of my favorite models. It's basically my substitute for low white uh, shoes because I don't actually have any white Air Forces, as you can see. Uh, yeah, these are just like my go-to and I really like the uh, white eyelets, uh, sorry, uh, lacelets there as well. Uh, sorry, the gold lacelets there with the Jumpman on them there. I thought that was a nice little touch to make it feel even more premium. But yeah, that is the next row that we covered, guys. Uh, let me know how you feel about any of the models showcased here. Uh, we'll now move on to our final row. Let's get into it. And here we are, guys. The final row. <laughs> with, with, we, we've got a heavy hitter here in the middle, you know, just to, just to keep the excitement to the end. <laughs> so we have, to kick it off with, my only pair of Air Forces. We have, uh, these came out yonks ago, but we have these... I don't even know what material it is. It's really crazy. So it's it looks like a suede at the back here on the red with a nice little embroidered pair of uh, scissors there. But then it has this, I don't even know, how, it feels like a wetsuit. Like it's like really soft, really nice on the feet. I don't know what this material is. So let me know in the comment section if you do know, but it's this red suede and blue pair of Air Forces that I bought back in like, I don't even know, like 2015 or something like that. These were ages ago i don't wear them a lot but uh i showed these showed these in my last showcasing video and you guys really really like them i think air forces are i guess on trend now or more on trend in these obscure colorways but uh yeah i really like these like vintage looking laces they came with just the overall vintage looking look um initially i hated them though i bought them and i was like this is the biggest mistake i've ever made <laughs> except for maybe buying these but yeah, I don't know. They are actually all right. I, I initially, when I got them, I called them the Spider-Man Air Forces because of the, you know, blue and the red here. But uh, yeah, no, I definitely should break these out a little bit more. It's such a thick sole. Like the Air Forces, that's just whew, chunky. Very, very chunky. But yeah. Um, oh, and another issue was is that I had some bleeding. The denim that I was wearing at the time with them, sorry, actually bled on them a little bit. Um, so it kind of like, after they got bled on, I was like, all right, they're going in the box. They're not coming out ever again. <laughs> uh, now next, look, when I started out, it was a rough time. <laughs> you know, we started off, we started off sneaker collecting pretty damn rough. I don't know why I chose these for my first ever pair of Jordan 1s or just Jordans in general. I, I was thinking different, but now I just wear these whenever I go to music festivals and I just want like a high pair of high tops so people don't kick me in the ankle and stuff like that. We have these elephant print Jordan 1 highs with non-OG branding. I know, very unlike me. Uh, I just, again, I don't even know what my thought process was. I don't think there was a thought process. I think I was just like Jordan 1 equals cool, gonna buy one. Uh, and then I bought this monstrosity. Uh, so yeah, I don't wear these at all in any normal outfits. I, these are literally dedicated to festivals. Like if I'm heading to a music festival and I need my sneakers, uh, well, I need my ankles to survive a mosh pit or something like that, I wear these. Uh, yeah, I've worn these in some actually some pretty big acts. I wore these wearing like seen like Vince Staples, Flume, Run the Jewels. These have these have seen some artists. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I really want them to see the light of day, as you can see, you know, trying to hide them as much as I can. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, um, first pair, shameful pair, 
definitely don't wear them as much as well I shouldn't <laughs> but uh yeah the crazy memories there bought those yonks ago they came in a black colorway actually which wasn't too bad I don't know why the hell I bought red over black but uh yeah not too bad and they've legitimately aged like the sole is going yellow because I've just yeah worn them and not cared about them enough now we move into the big ones uh what we have here if you don't know already is the 2015 30 year anniversary retro of the air jordan one chicago's um i bought these way back in like 2016 like way like literally a couple months after they dropped these were only going for around like three times the retail price so three times uh 160 usd they weren't going for that much maybe in like the really sought after sizes they were going for a lot more back then but definitely not as much as these crazy ass shoes go for these days uh, i bought these as part of a package deal with the air jordan 1.5s the guy said he'd sell these to me cheaper if i bought the 1.5s as well so i got the 1.5s um as part of that deal i love this pair of like this colorway like i if i had to scrap all the sneakers that i have and could only keep one these would be the ones that i would keep uh, I want to wear them so much that the red is like faded and it's all beaten up and scraped. I really love the aesthetic of like Chicago ones just beaten to hell. Like it's just like, a, it just looks really nice and it looks really nice with like modern day fits of like washed out jeans and just, I mean, I think this colorway looks sick when it's super washed out and you wear it with like a bunch of washed out capital pieces too. It just looks sick. So I'm hoping over the like next couple years, the more I beat them up, the more that I wear them. Uh, they'll just come out looking really really nice, but these have been through hell and back. I can tell you these are um Yeah, these have been through some moments um, Awesome shoe. I bought them. I've never put the white laces in I've never even put the red laces in I don't think wherever the red are uh, there they are. I was gonna say wherever the red laces went Yeah, I've never put the alternative laces in just worn them as is, although they do look really nice with the white laces. I have seen some photos of them with white laces and they do look really nice there. But yeah, iconic shoe, bought them at the right time. I was at the right place at the right time, got into sneakers at the right time. Because now, um, obviously the attitudes have changed. Back in 2016 when I bought them, it was, you know, Jordan brand is dead, Yeezy is gonna take over. And now Yeezy's releasing, I don't know, weird looking puffer jacket uh, boots and stuff. So. And then the wave flipped and all the celebrities are wearing Jordans again and The Last Dance did an episode on them so now the price is just dumb. But yeah, I'd never sell them. Absolutely love that pair. Now moving into this one. This one blew up because of uh, TikTok I would say. This one over the past 12 months has gotten really really popular because uh, yeah, the Dunks got the similar colorway treatment um, and it's yeah really just gotten a lot of popularity recently. What we have here is the UNC. Jordan ones, the North Carolina blue. We, uh, it is the colorway of Michael Jordan's uh, university he went to, uh, or college. Uh, and uh, I remember buying these from East Bay on sale for like low 110 USD or something like that uh, in my size, because they weren't selling out, because nobody wanted them. These were the only retro since their initial release back in 1985, and people didn't want them. And I mean, now it's changed. Now these go for, I don't even know. I think I saw the last price was like hundreds and hundreds of US dollars, which was just stupid because I remember buying this for nothing. Again, just same as the Chicago's, right place at the right time. But uh, yeah, I did put the blue laces in at one point, but I think they look better with the white laces. I'd love to beat these up as well and have them have like a really retro looking look as well. But uh, yeah, just an awesome colorway. Uh, would love these to get a, a low OG treatment as well. Uh, we now move into the final shoe in my sneaker collection. Bit of a wild one, one that I bought for basically nothing. We have the David Letterman Air Jordan 1s. So there's this famous interview with David Letterman that Michael Jordan has, where uh, they talk about the, uh, you know, the NBA banning the uh, breads because of their color. It didn't have enough white in it. Uh, I... I personally love the interview because uh, it's just a funny interview to watch. But in the interview, Michael Jordan is wearing a tracksuit, a, a satin tracksuit, where it's got this really intense red with this really shiny blue interior on the tracksuit that he's wearing. 
And then these were a pair of Jordan 1s that obviously were inspired by that said tracksuit. And to change it up, instead of Nike Air on the inside, I don't know if you guys can see, it says uh, on air there to obviously symbolize that they're live on air and it has a microphone on the on the insole in there that we can't see. Uh, look, I purely bought those because those were dumb cheap. They were like 80 USD on GOAT when I bought them. I don't know how what they go for these days, but knowing how much Jordan 1s go for these days, probably a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, yeah, I wear them every now and again, but they're definitely not something I break out a lot because that red is really intense and the navy blue metallic on it is just like really intense as well. Definitely not one that I wear a lot. Definitely more like a beta pair, but yeah. That is it guys, that is my entire sneaker collection and the final row here. Uh, let me know how you feel about any of the shoes in the collection or the final row here uh, in general, what your thoughts and opinions on it all, down in that comment section below. But that's it guys. Oh, <laughs> I'm a little bit exhausted after that actually. So much talking about sneakers. There we go. That is my sneaker collection as of the 7th of November, 2021. Uh, I, I went into every shoe in you know, as much detail as I could think of at the time. But yeah, I've got quite a few. I haven't actually sold any of them. Every single pair of sneakers that I've bought since my first pair, I've held on to because I only buy stuff that I wear. So, I mean, I, I, I say that and then I've got like the David Letterman ones and the, uh, uh, a Star Was Born ones that I just like don't wear a lot or, or the Chameleon Sixes as well yeah but yeah I've worn every single pair and bought them I mean the ones that I haven't worn a lot I only bought because they were very cheap <laughs> and I knew that they were just gonna go up in price over time but yeah no I'm pretty happy with the collection uh, what would I like to add to the collection moving forward uh, I'd love to add some Air Jordan 3s, 4s uh like some 12s and 13s potentially um i'd love to like if kanye's uh designer brand yeezy not the collaboration with adidas that they always do but the mainline yeezy actually did his like desert boots and stuff in my size oh i would love some kanye desert boots combat boots like his mainline stuff is really good but uh yeah like heaps of stuff that i want just doesn't come in my size, so <laughs> I'm stuck to Nike and Jordan brand, but that's not too bad, I suppose. Uh, oh, I would love some Yeezy 500 highs. Yeezy 500 highs in like the, the stone mist or the mist stone that came out recently. Uh, there's a couple other colorways that are really nice for the 500 highs. I think the 500 highs is sick. I mean, I love the 750s, of course, but don't we all? Um, yeah, no, I can definitely think of some uh, shoes I'd love to add to it. The whole issue is that because sneaker culture's like blown up uh, in the past couple years, it's just impossible to get stuff at what I see as like a really good price. Like, I know you're probably like, oh, but you buy a lot of hoodies and stuff that are probably around like the $300 to $500 price range. Why don't you feel okay with spending money on shoes of that same caliber? Well, it's because I'm buying a hoodie that is like 300 USD because it's handmade in Japan you know all, all these added things like rare materials used for it x y and z if you pay 300 dollars for resale for sneakers you're really just paying 300 dollars for a 170 dollars shoe <laughs> for the jordan ones for an example so i i feel more justified buying something that is actually more closely worth the 300 dollars than something that has been inflated to those 300 dollars because obviously the hoodie isn't worth 300 but it's probably a lot closer in the amount of time and effort that it was, uh, you know, put into that piece versus the uh, <laughs> the Jordans. So uh, that's just why I just the inflation of the prices is just a bit too high for me to justify buying like shoes all the time. But I definitely would love to add some extra sneakers to this, uh, uh, you know, collection I've got going on. Uh, we're just gonna have to see what how the future, you know plays out I guess but uh yeah let me know how you guys feel about the collection if there's any pairs that really stood out to you any pairs that you really like uh let me know let me know down in that comment section below uh how you feel about the collection or any of the pairs showcased in the video 
And of course, if you guys want me to do more showcasing videos or more videos like this, uh, don't forget to leave a big old like on this video. Let me know what kind of videos you want me to do down in that comment section below. Uh, and the best indicator you can give me to say, hey, I want more content like this is obviously subscribing to the channel. Uh, we're trying to aim for the new subscriber milestone this month of 3,145 subscribers. Uh, we're pretty close to it. Uh, hopefully with your guys' continuous support, we can reach that milestone before the end of November. But that's everything I really got to say about my sneaker collection as of yet, guys. Uh, so until the next showcase video, until the next sneaker talk video, until the next streetwear talk video, I'll catch you later.